Hey and welcome to a new video. Today we will do again AMD Ryzen Threadripper deleting. So if you followed my channel you will know that I already did a deleting video a few weeks ago with AMD Ryzen Threadripper. Back in the days I was using an engineering sample and underneath the heat spreader we actually found four dice and I had to take the video offline for a few days and had to take it back online. It's online now. And in between, some media quoted AMD that some of the dice, actually two of the four dice are not active on Threadripper and that there are two dummy dice on the CPU. Personally, I'm actually pretty sure that there is no such thing as dummy dice. At least I cannot think of a reason why you would use two pieces of silicon and just not use them at all and just put them onto a PCB. I think you would rather modify the IHS if there was any kind of mechanical reason for like stability in the socket or something like this, you would rather modify the heat spreader than uh, wasting two pieces of silicon. So I'm pretty sure that all four dice actually have transistors on them. And to figure out if that's true, we will delete this CPU. And I went out actually to the store and bought this CPU for 1000 euro, just to make sure that nobody of you can say afterwards, it's just an engineering sample and the retail version will have only two dice on it or retail version will have two dummy dice, two active dice. And so to avoid all that, we are using a retail CPU. It's a 1950X. So we will essentially remove the heat spreader again and then take off the four dice. I will grind down the four dice with uh, specific methods and then we will take die shots and see what's actually inside the dice. Learning from my last Threadripper deleting video, we have a stripe in the middle of the IHS that's keeping together the PCB and the heat spreader and the whole heat spreader is, uh, is also glued to the PCB and we have four dice that are soldered to the heat spreader. I want to make 100% sure that the heat spreader or while taking off the heat spreader we are not damaging the CPU. So we are actually using a special daily die mate for this CPU. So I grabbed some pieces of aluminium, used my CNC mill, drilled a lot of holes. and essentially created the prototype for AMD Threadripper deleting. Obviously, it's not the most beautiful um, delete die mate I've ever created, but it just has to work one time. So essentially, it works the same way as my other delete die mates. You just put a CPU in, it's fixed by the screws in front, and then this small lever here is pushing away the heat spreader, and you're just pushing with this screw. So it's very simple, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's not beautiful, but it should work. So I will put the Ryzen Threadripper inside the delete die mate and then put it in the oven at like 180 degrees Celsius for maybe a half an hour and check the temperature of the IHS to make sure everything is nice and warm. So we're me actually melting the indium inside the uh, heat spreader, the one, uh, the, the indium which is sticking together the dice with the heat spreader. And then we should only um, put actually we will only push against the glue, which should make the leading very easy and also quite safe. And we're not bending the CPU again and we're probably not killing any dice. So I will be back in a bit and then we will take a look underneath the heat spreader. So I'm finally back and I have time to work on this video. It took me like two or three weeks because of all the Gamescom stuff in between. So finally back on this video. So. Um, the last uh, situation was that I wanted to delete my CPU, so I used uh, the delete die mate for Threadripper and put the CPU inside and put all this together in the oven at like 220 degrees Celsius and I left it in there for about 45 minutes. I kept checking the temperature of the die, actually uh, kept checking the temperature of the IHS with the thermometer and once it hit roughly 170 degrees Celsius, I took everything out of the oven, put it here on the table and slowly started with the deleting. I noticed that there is like almost no force needed at all to push the IHS away. That's mainly because all the solder was liquid at that point and I only had to work against the glue. So eventually I took off the IHS using a knife and then I left everything here overnight because it was actually very, very hot stuff. And on the next day, I took the CPU again and I started cleaning the CPU or the dice itself with a knife from the unnecessary indium residues.
In the end I also put some marks on the dice so we can always identify which die was in which place in uh, the case that there are actually dummy dice on there and that we don't find circles or we find circuits on some dice that we know which dice were placed on which position. So now it's time for the very interesting stuff and if you're let's say over emotional about hardware um, this is your last chance to uh, quit out of this video but if you're interested you should definitely stay in here. So what I did was um, I'm actually following a, a tutorial from a German guy his name is Fritzjens Fritz and he did a lot of die shots previously um, of older hardware and I came across his videos quite a while ago on a news on PC games hardware. So if you're interested, maybe check out the link to his channel in the description. I'm basically following his tutorial uh, for expo exposing flip chip dice. So I took a huge copper block and heated a copper block with a torch to around 360 degrees Celsius and then used my CPU facing downwards to the copper block and put it on there. And after like 20 seconds, I noticed that the PCB uh, got some blisters and it seems like the package was cracking and the package um, yeah, you can see it's actually, and you can see it's quite horrible for the CPU actually, and you can see that the package is dying at this point, but that's pretty much the only way you can take off the dice uh, without damaging them, because the thing is, the dice are actually flip chip dice, that means uh, you have the silicon and then you build up all the circuits on top in many, 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 many layers with building up uh, materials and etching and all this kind of stuff. And then in the end you have the, the contacts on top, um, then you flip the die and put it onto the package. That's why it's called a flip chip die. And essentially if we want to expose the circuits, we have to take off the die and grind the top area where we can find all the circuits. Because if we would just grind on what we see facing upwards, then we would just grind on the silicon and nothing else and we couldn't find anything. So essentially I managed to take off all the dice. It took like one hour to take all of them off. And that's mainly because the underfill, which is well under the die between the package and the die to protect the BGAs, um, that material is extremely strong. So we have, uh, we need a lot of um, heat and a lot of energy to remove that underfill. And essentially it took all of the dice off. They're all in one piece. And um, I'm very happy. So the next step we have to do is grind down. So here you can see the package without all the dice. The package is actually quite ruined. Uh, you can see still all the blisters on the backside and um, a lot of the parts actually came off. Some stuff is still sticking on the back of this die. So I have to use this die. This is actually die number four and use some uh, aluminum oxide lapping materials to remove the residues on the back and then essentially use some nine micrometers and three micrometers uh, diamond lapping materials to polish down the dies so we can expose the circuits. So in the first step I took the 40 micrometer micro finishing film from 3M and uh, of course I had to use the water and then I started grinding down the CPU. The first thing I had to get rid of was the residues from the underfill and also all the solder that was still on the backside of the CPU. So going through all that very, very carefully and then eventually coming to the first copper layer, also removing the first copper layer on the 40 micrometer sheet. Then eventually moving on to the 9 micrometer film and um, on this one because it's, it's so extremely thin it takes quite a lot of time and you have to keep checking the CPU in which layer you are. And that's actually also quite a challenge because I never knew how, do, how deep do I actually have to grind the CPU and uh, in which layer am I, is there anything underneath or am I already going too far. So that was quite a challenge, I had to keep track on that. That's also the reason why I decided to grind all of the four dice to different stages, to different levels, just to make sure that I have um, contents and photos of everything and not going too deep. Otherwise, uh, it could be possible that, well, you just have silicon and no um, circuits left and that's not what I want. So then eventually moving on from the nine micrometer to the three micrometer to the diamond finishing, lapping, film and on that one it's basically just to remove the, the last residues from the 9 micrometer one and then uh, we can start taking at some photos of the dice. So here we have the dice and well as expected we have four dice with eight cores on each die. So 
there is no such thing as dummy dice exactly as I as I expected this and um, I mean it was kind of obvious why would you solder an empty silicon die onto a PCB that didn't really make any sense in the first place so here we have um, the proof we have a 32 core CPU um, the 1950x um, I think that the 1920x and like the 8 core um, 12 core they should all be uh, 32 cores as well. The question is are they maybe some damaged dice or are they just de deactivated? Do we essentially have an epic CPU or is it... I don't know, it's uh, very hard to tell. My personal guess is that AMD will eventually release a 32 core desktop CPU. That's the only explanation I can find why they would do all of this. For sure they would not waste any money on CPUs that wouldn't make any kind of sense. So for sure they would not waste just uh, perfectly working Ryzen dice. So my um, personal explanation is that AMD will eventually release a 32 core CPU for the desktop market. I think using the Infinity fabric it should be absolutely possible to do that even with a TR4 socket. So that's my personal explanation why they're doing what they're doing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Actually there so much time and money went into this video so um, thanks for your support um, if you want to support me because I always get this question how can we support your work just keep watching the videos disable adblock for YouTube this way you also dis uh, support all the other youtubers on this platform who spend so much time and uh, effort on this platform uh, to provide uh, good content to you guys so I hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up you can find all the pictures in the description below uh, if you want to download them and take a closer look at them Otherwise, uh, have a very nice day and see you soon.